So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to populate our database with some sample albums. So we've already created that database in a previous video. So all we need to do in this video is just copy these insert statements and insert that data into the database. Another thing we're going to cover in this video is creating the database access layer for our application. So there's a whole bunch of stuff they have here on how to create the models, how to create the ORM for working with the database. I don't think we'll be able to cover all of this in one tutorial. It might take two or three different tutorials, but just be warned that things are gonna get a lot more complicated now. And the way that Zen deals with creating the models is pretty complicated, and it requires us to do a lot of things manually that would be done for us in other frameworks. So just be braced in order to do a lot of configuration with me here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just copy these insert statements right here we're going to be inserting into a table called album. So if I go over here, I've actually already renamed my table. It was called albums before, but I've renamed it to album. You can do that within phpMyAdmin by just selecting the album table and then clicking operations. And in the second column here, you can just rename that table to album. So I've already done that now. So I'm just going to click on the SQL button right here, and I'm going to paste in these uh, SQL statements and I'll click go. And we'll see we're getting an error here. We're getting unknown column title and field list. That's because I named that uh, that column table before. So let's just change that quickly within uh, the structure part. We'll change that to title. And then I'll go back over to SQL and we'll we'll paste this in here and click go. So we'll see that we've populated our table with five different albums right now. Each album has an ID, it has an artist, and a title. So what we're going to do next is create a file called album.php, which is going to reside in src slash album slash model. So I'm just going to copy this code right here. And let's go over to our text editor into the album model. So let's first fold up a few of these. So we're going into our module folder and then with an album, then src and then album, and then go into the model. So I'm just going to control click on model in Sublime. And we're going to click a new file here. I'll paste in my text and then control S to save. I think this was going to be called model.php. I'm just going to make sure of that really soon. We're missing our opening PHP tags here, so let's add those in. So let's just make sure of the name of this file first. Uh, it was supposed to be album.php, so I'm just going to rename that here. So we can see that what this class is representing here is basically just a row in the database. We have ID, artist, and title. So those are the three different fields that make up a row. And the way I like to think of a row in the database is the model. So when I hear of model, I don't think of a database table. I think of a record in the database. That's what a model means to me. So we'll see we have this one function here, which is called exchange array. I'm not sure where this is called from. I think this is called from another class. And it gets past an array of data here. So all that we're doing here is we're setting the properties on this model we've created right here. So this function gets called from somewhere. It gets passed an array of data. And then we just check if those, uh, those indexes in the data exist. If there was an ID, then we set this.id to the ID that was in the array, or else we set it to null. And we do that check for each one of these. If it was set, then we just set the property on this class. So that's done now. So let's go back over to Zen's website here and find out the next thing we need to do. So the next thing we're gonna do is create this album table.php. This is also gonna sit within the SRC album model folder. And if we look at what's going on here, it is having the table gateway injected as a dependency. So you can see within the constructor right here, um, we're using dependency injection and we're injecting the table gateway in here. It's being set as a protected property of this class which is the album table. So that makes me think that this class is just a representation of the album table in the database. And if we look at some of the things that the table gateway is doing within this class, we'll see we're accessing the table gateway and then accessing the select method of it. We have the select method again down here. Down here we have an insert. So really it's just a database wrapper. It's like an ORM for, um, for dealing with your database instead of writing those raw SQL statements, we are going to use these methods from the table gateway class. So we insert the table gateway into our album table class. So let's go ahead and copy everything within here. I'm going to copy all of this and we're going to create that new file within our model folder. 
So let's go back over here and I'm just going to uh, control click on model. We'll cre create a new file. I'll paste that in here. We're going to need those PHP tags at the top again. And we're going to name this class album table.php. So let's take a look at what's happening with this class. At first glance, it seems like it has a lot of helper methods here in order for doing some basic interactions with our database, such as fetching all of the different albums, getting a particular album, saving an album, and things like that. So in order for us to easily interact with our database, we are going to have a dependency of this class, which is the table gateway. So that gets injected through the constructor and set as a property of the class. And then we use this table gateway within different methods here to help us to interact with this table. So we'll see in this fetch all method, method right here, we have this table gateway in select, and then we just return that result set. So this is going to return a collection of, of all of the different albums. So let's take a look at the next method here, which is get album, and it takes the ID. So this is obviously going to grab a particular album for you, and it needs to be passed the ID so it knows which one to get. And what we're doing in here is we're first casting that ID to an integer. And then in the next line, we have this table gateway select. And then it's taken an array where ID is equal to ID. So this is probably doing a where statement right here. So we're going to be saying something like select star from the albums table where ID is equal to ID. So because the IDs should be unique in the database, this should return us one row. And then we have row set to current. That's probably grabbing the first row. If it didn't find anything, it's throwing an exception. But if you pass it a proper ID, it's going to return that row to you. The next method is save album. And what it takes as its argument is a object from the album class. You can see that it's type hinted here to album. So we need to pass this an object, which comes from a class called album. And let's see what's happening in right here. We have a data array being set up here. Artist is set to the artist, obviously, that was passed in. And title is set to the title. So it's going to be passed a valid album right here. And if we go, go down a little bit further here, again, we're typecasting the ID to an integer. And if that wasn't found, then when this is cast to an integer, this is going to be 0. So if ID is equal to 0, um, it wasn't a valid ID. So um, that that album is not in the database right now, so we're going to need to do an insert statement in order to um, create that in the database. But if there was something there, then we don't need to create it in the database because it's already there. So what we're going to do is just update it here. So it's going to do this get album. It's going to find that record in the database, and then we're going to do an update on it um, where ID is equal to ID. So this save album will create the album if it doesn't exist, but if it does exist, it's going to update it. Finally, the last method here is quite self-explanatory. Delete album, and it takes the ID of the album, and that is going to remove the album from the table. So let's go back over to the documentation now and find out what we need to do next. The next thing that we need to do is using the service manager to configure the table gateway and inject it into the album table. So I read through this a couple of times, and it's pretty complicated. I don't think I'd do a very good job of explaining it. So if you want to know what's uh, happening in detail here, you should probably go to this page and read it yourself. So I'm just going to be following the instructions here. What we're going to be doing is adding some code to module.php, which we created earlier within the module album folder. So I'm just going to start copying these statements right here. I'm going to copy this. And let's go back over our code. And we need to go within the album folder. So within our module and then album, and then open up uh, module.php. So let's see. We need to paste in these new use statements. So I'm just going to paste these use statements here underneath the namespace. Let's just uh, clean this up a little bit. And then I'm going to come back over to the documentation here. And I'm going to copy this new method, which is called getServiceConfig. I'm going to copy this. And we'll see we're going to paste this under the getAutoloaderConfig and getConfig methods. So just under here, I'm going to paste that in. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our database connection credentials. So just scrolling down here to this next block where it's returning an array, I'm just going to copy all of this right here. And what you want to do is you want to go into your skeleton config auto load folder, and then you'll see a global.php file within here. By default, it will just be returning an array with nothing in it. So I'm just going to delete this and paste in the array from the example there. 
And we're returning an array here, which has another nested array within it with the DB credentials. And we can see that we're using PDO to connect to the database. And we're going to put our um, credentials in here in the PDO style. So our, our database name was um, Skeleton, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's called Skeleton. So I'm just going to change the ZF2 tutorial right here to Skeleton. The host is going to be localhost unless you're connecting, connecting to a remote MySQL server. And this configuration right here is going to be used unless there is a local.php. Um, so this is going to be the overall credentials. But you can also override this with um, local.php files. So, so if we go back over to the site here, you can see that it says you should put your database credentials in config autoload slash local.php so they're not in the git repository as local.php is ignored. We can actually check our um, application here. Let's look within the very root folder and let's look for a git ignore file. So if I look at the git ignore here, we'll see, um, actually I'm not seeing the local.php right here. So we probably need to add it. Um, so I'm actually just going to I'm going to add that file right here. I might actually add it later. But if you want something to be ignored by the version control system, it is going to need to be added here. So I think the path, we can actually add that in right now. It should be config slash, let's, uh, let's open this up here, config slash autoload slash, and then within autoload, we're just going to create a local.php. So just add that in there. And what we're going to do now is if within the autoload folder, I'm just going to create a new file. We're going to call this, um, let's save this as local.php. And then I'll just come back over to the site here and I'll copy this small array right here. Copy this and we'll paste it in here. Uh, don't forget to add your uh, PHP tags at the top of it. So we're returning an array of our local database connection credentials right here. In my case, it is uh, root and root for the username and password. If you're using something like XAMPP or WAMP by default, this will probably be root and then an empty string. But on a Mac by default, it's root and root. So that's all I want to cover in this tutorial. In the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to be adding some code to our controller. And we're also going to add the necessary code to our module so that we can list the albums. And we're also going to be able to creating a view, which is going to loop through those different albums. So we'll talk about that in the next video.